Welcome to video 7.5, functional groups. So, what are functional groups? Properties of organic compounds depend on their functional groups. And here's all sorts of different examples of functional groups that we can find on table R. And we're going to talk about each one of these. Once again, the beauty of the organic chemistry unit is almost everything is built right into the reference table for you. The first two we're going to look at are halides and alcohols. Halides and alcohols. Halides have one where are where one or more of the hydrogen has been replaced with a halogen. Remember halogens are group 17 and the fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So let's say we have instead of propane, let's say we replace one of these hydrogens with an F. Well, this would be fluoropropane. Fluoropropane. Alcohols, one or more of the hydrogens has been replaced with OH. Now, here's one important thing to remember, and it's going to be more plain after we do our unit on acids and bases. You're going to learn in there that usually OH attached to something means that something's a base. However, organic alcohols are not bases. They are not electrolytes. When we name these, we're going to change the suffix to all. So let's say we take ethane and we replace one of these hydrogens with OH then that would be eth anol ethanol now one weird thing on here that students frequently have trouble with is this R okay R it's just going to represent our chain of carbons. And the X, in this case, represents whichever halogen is attached. So if we look at our example up here, this three carbon chain is our R, and the fluorine is the X. Here in our alcohol, this two carbon chain is the R, and the OH is the OH. Ethers, aldehydes, and ketones. Ethers are two carbon chains joined by an oxygen. We can see here, right, a carbon chain, a carbon chain with a single bonded oxygen between them. And when we name them, we simply change the suffix to ether. So for example here, methyl ethyl ether, meaning there's a one methyl, Here's the oxygen to an ethyl group. And this will be called methyl ethyl ether. Aldehydes and ketones both happen to be water soluble. They're going to have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. So here we have, so we can see a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. Here we can see a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. The difference is, on an aldehyde, the carbon is double bonded to the oxygen at the end of the molecule. All right, see here there's only one R. And the suffix is anal. So if we have C, 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 this is double bonded to an oxygen, H. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and three carbon, so it's prop anal, propanal. And a ketone, it's gonna be one of the other carbons in the middle that's double bonded to an oxygen. And for them the suffix is unknown. So our example here, we can see that the second carbon is double bonded to the oxygen. So this would be one, two, one, two, three, four, five, five carbons. So it's pent. And since it's a ketone, it ends with a known. 
everything's built right into the reference table. Organic acids and esters. Organic acids are going to have a carbon, two oxygens, and then a hydrogen, but it's arranged like this, where the carbon on the end is double bonded to an oxygen, and then it's single bonded to another oxygen, which is single bonded to a hydrogen. And this, these tend to be very weak electrolytes, because they are acids, but they're weak acids. And the suffix will be anoic acid. So if we have four, sorry, three carbons, so there's going to be prop, double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to an oxygen, which is single bonded to a hydrogen. One, two, one, two, three. Prop, anoic acid just like here esters are going to have a carbon with two oxygens and then more stuff attached to them so an important word you have to know so I'm giving it to you here and when we do uh, talk about reactions they're formed by esterification they're very strongly fragrant uh, a, a lot of artificial flavors are going to use esters Especially like a very common one is those like banana candies. Right? There's no real banana in them, but there's esters that smell very strongly of bananas. And the suffix is anoate. And we can look down here and see. Right? Imagine this hydrogen was just replaced by another R or another string of carbons, another chain of carbons. Okay, so you're going to have some sort of R. Bonded to a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to some more carbons. So we can here, see here one, two, three carbons on one side. Okay, This carbon is double bonded to an oxygen. And then this carbon is single bonded to an oxygen, which is then single bonded to another carbon. All right, getting to the end here. Amines are going to have a nitrogen. Okay, and there can be as many as three. All right, if we play, replace one or more of the hydrogens in NH3 with an alkyl group, that's going to give you an amine. And the suffix is anamine, just like we can see here. Amides, if you replace the OH in organic acid with NH2. And the suffix is anamide. You don't see a lot of those, but these are both very important biological molecules. All right, question time. So you have five things to label here, alcohol, halide, organic acid, ester, and aldehyde. You should definitely be able to label which one is which simply by looking at the reference table. All right, that brings us to the end of 7.5. I will see you guys in